Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Depressed Eeyore, and this is Langers for Mobile Apex Season 14. Uh, this will be the last match for me, as this will be the last week of uh, point race before they go into elimination. Um, I went on a losing streak prior to this match. I lost about four times in a row. Um, half those matches were on the Sky map, which are, is a really, really bad map. I mean, it's always been a bad map, but it's even worse now for this box, because a lot of my AoEs are lying, and... Uh, until you get into the center, or yeah, pretty much until you get into the center, you don't really your um, your your uh, options are very very limited, um, and I don't have a lot of ways of closing the ground without. Um, I would either have to rely on portals, or I have to rely on um, the uh, ter uh, terrain that uh, Polyol spawns, but that also wastes her three C if I do it early, so. Um, Pretty messy. Also, I've just been really, really exhausted today, uh, so um, that also was probably part of it. Um, the boxes themselves were kind of varied, at least, and I did get to see some uh, interesting combos with certain units that I didn't see that often. Uh, I'm still not great at the band pick stuff, uh, needless to say. Um, it's really hard to find what things to go for. Um, a lot of boxes also seem to like to include Landius or Christiane. Which kind of forces me to ban them first, which opens them up to usually take someone like Rosen Seal afterwards, and then after that I'm kind of screwed. Um, and if my opponent bit bans someone like Karika first, I'm even I, I struggle even more. Uh, the other thing is compared to the videos I've been watching uh, from uh, the uh, was it the was it Korean or the uh, Chinese servers, um, the opponents that they that they show don't seem to know what to do against things characters like Karika and stuff, while my opponents that I've been fighting in Gold 3 seem to be completely comfortable on knowing exactly what to do about them. Um, also, just a number of my mistakes were just kind of just poor placement and movement, um, and maybe being too either too aggressive or too cautious and missing a lot of good opportunities to get kills. Um, in any case, um, our opponent here is Cyrus. Um, who was kind enough to do a hello with this uh, for this match? Um, the box is pretty varied. A lot of faces I don't see too often. We got Mariondel. Uh, we don't see Werner too often anymore. Um, of course, we got Girl in the Shell, um, and then just uh, seems to be a lot of AOE. Um, there are some ways to help close distance, but it seems like the main focus here is a lot of AOE. Um, there's a few strikers, but not many. Uh, the good news is I don't have the there is no risen seal, so I don't really need to worry about that. And uh, the healing option, healer options are actually not that many. Um, Lacoris can technically be a healer, and we got Liana. Um, then we have some passive heals. Well, I guess Mariandel has does have one direct heal, um, and then of course we have um, I don't remember her name. Agnes, that's her name. Um, Agnes for some passive healing as well. So I'll go ahead and ban Landius, because he can uh, heavily reduce um, range damage. I'll go ahead and grab Karika as my opening. They did ban my Awakened. Uh, they went straight for my tanks. Um, not exactly sure of the plan here. My, also, my opponent went for a tank. Uh, so I was completely fine with getting rid of their Act again, get rid of their Awakener. Um, the Awakened is also very, very annoying. Um, I did lose a match to her as well. Um, I went ahead and took Lightbringer. Um, I lose Rosen Seal, lose... Um, Autumn Kelmo, they grab Sword and Light Shadow. I go ahead and get rid of Agnes so they don't have any self reses. Got rid of Polyol because she can also self res and also cl uh, close the distance pretty quickly. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed Agnes at this point. Because um, at this point, uh, my opponent doesn't really. There's a few healing options, but not that many. And Agnes can easily provide some means to help defend against someone like Burner. Um, and also gives me just really long range AoEs to kind of just start peck away at them. All right, lose some more of my AOE, lose my Dancer, grab that girl in the shell, I'll go ahead and get rid of their healer and pseudo healer. I go ahead and grab uh, uh, Lana at this point, they go ahead and ban my remaining healers, or two of my remaining healers, and they actually let me have an act again, so I was like, okay, sure. Grab, uh, also, out of all of them, well actually it doesn't really matter, all of them would have been able to buff Karika in some form. Um, uh, Sissy White has access to um, Mass Attack. Uh, Liana, of course, can just provide uh, Gossipal or equivalent Gossipal with her exclusive. And then um, 
Sophia here can uh, per her exclusive would also provide a, a not as powerful attack buff, but uh, but can provide one. Uh, we got Werner here. I go ahead and grab Sissy White as my official healer, and they grab. Um, yeah, they go ahead and grab um, Bozel. But we don't see too often anymore. So yeah, Werner here, pretty standard Werner. Uh, we got Girl in the Shell. Uh, does have Link Smash. And yeah, pretty much all of her exclusives. Uh, Sword and Light Shadow, this one did bring Sword Soul and not um, Air Slash. Uh, Hilda here is brought Royal Cavalry of all things, which isn't that useful because I think they only reduce physical damage. I mean, not that that really matters, I'm not using any single target. Uh, besides that, it's just her usual kit with her exclusive. Um, we got Bozel here with her with his usual thing, uh, 3C. Uh, did bring faction buff, uh, which will buff himself and uh, Girl in the Shell. Uh, Hilda will buff herself and I think one of the I think Sword and Light Shadow, but I'm not sure. Um, but besides that, he just has his 3C for his AOE, which is usually more than enough. Uh, nothing too special here. I did bring my mass attack on Sissy White. That way, I can buff Karika. Uh, Lightbringer can buff everyone else. Um, yeah, and have Phalanx on her. Um, really, the troop type didn't matter too much. The only one that can really do any attacks is, Ver is Verner there. Uh, Lana, all AoEs with Redeemers. And then Agnes, AoEs with 3C with Shrine Maidens. Alright, so. I don't have to worry about uh, my opponent reaching me this round. That's kind of the, the big thing. Um, there are so many long lake characters or teleports that it it's just... For this box to really work, I need to limit their high mobility. And I'm still not that good at it. Or my opponent just simply has so many, it doesn't seem to matter. So here we go, we went and just did some free damage to Werner there. So yeah, the uh, faction buff... Um, Reincarnation does apply to um, Sword and Light Shadow. It also applied to... I think it also applied to um, Girl in the Shell. In any case, um, yeah, so I kind of... I, I made sure my order was in a way that everyone would be able to get their plus damage buff uh, for the next round from Karika. And I didn't bother with any summons this round. Uh, this round I am going to have enough for a 3C. So I move in with Heaven Sanction. Immediately kill Werner. So yeah, the earlier um, glow hammer I did reduced him to about, you know, 10,405. Let's see what the damage was. I will need to do double that. Yeah, more than yeah, that was a little more than double. Uh, this sword and light shadow does have a Mimir's hammer, or not Mimir's hammer? Is that Mimir's hammer? Whatever the hammer that gives her, her buffs whenever. Um, units die. Uh, which is not a big deal because Sword and Light Shadow is completely out of position. Um, if I mean, I guess the plan here would have been maybe to move Werner up and get a kill or something, but even then I would still get the kill off of him. And let Sword and Light Shadow wouldn't be able to close the distance. Um, Girl and Shell is in range to do her uh, Link Smash or any other AoEs that are in her Arcane Traversal. So sure enough, I get Link Smashed. I don't have to worry about silence because I have mass attack active. Um, Lana did take some, both a damage taken, damage dealt, uh, can't receive buffs, magic def defense debuff, and then damage dealt decreased on Karika, which is a little annoying because obviously I want to do as much damage as possible. So she falls back, does a function upgrade, gets some passive healing from uh, Warlocks. So at this point I went and did my Shiguri. Uh, so yeah, that 20% debuff is what kept Girl in the Shell alive. <laughs> She's at 200 HP. So yeah, everyone here is going to be moving more than enough to deal with the arrow rain. I'm not too bit worried about that, but as you can see, I definitely have softened them up quite a bit. So, Descent of Chaos. At this point, there's a million debuffs on uh, Lana there. So I went and did Glowhammer. And take out Girl in the Shell. And at this point, my opponent gives up. So yeah, pretty pretty quick. Uh, pretty much if I'm going against a standard tank push, um, 
and there's no rose in the seal, um, I can usually just blow it away. Um, I think one big issue I ran into in a number of fights where I, where I was up against a rose in the seal was um, I rushed to I, my my opponents would always open with the, the AOE crystal heal, and I should have just out I should have just waited for it to wear off before moving into attack. I mean, it still wouldn't have been been great because it still could be reapplied pretty quickly once the cooldowns off. But um, yeah, um, the box is pretty fun, but it does definitely has flaws, and it definitely very much revolves around being good at band pick, which I am not. Um, I'll probably still stick with this because it's just something different. Um, I do like using long range art artillery type units, um, so I may try to mess around with the box and try to make it fit my style instead of just copying uh, some other YouTuber. Um, but it was kind of it was a neat thing, and watching some, uh, someone that had a very consistent box that actually used all female characters was actually very helpful because um, it kind of gave me an idea of how to kind of work with it. Unfortunately, the opponents on the Eastern servers compared to global um, are very very different. Um, a lot of the Eastern servers, of course, you know, don't have the uh, previews of the upcoming characters that they can take advantage of, like we like the global characters can, because we can literally just watch their matches and see how the characters work. Uh, before they come out and that's kind of the biggest issue so by the time karika came out most people knew how to handle her um so and yeah that's just kind of how it is and even if um even if they do know how to like stack their characters properly so they don't get hit by karika's arrow um there are ways to kind of try to take advantage of that as well so that's just something i have to kind of keep in mind but overall um it's very fun um Obviously, my win percentage this season wasn't great, but that's all right. I've been pretty kind of out of it this month anyway. I've been so busy with work and uh, a variety of other games and running my own games. So, um, yeah. Uh, as for the, any sort of box changes, it's hard to say. Um, I do like the idea of just super buffing a character and blasting away with them. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work as great as I would like. Um, and my in the um, ESO, the the YouTuber I watched to kind of get the, the idea for these uh, for this box um, for the the upcoming season where there's the other exclusive character that's essentially a big AOE nuker as well. Um, one of the things they did was they took um, they took this character here, um, they took Toa and made her a sword class, and used her to essentially stack up a bunch of. Um, buffs onto the uh, said uh, said exclusive character and blow blow units away. Um, mainly it was taking advantage of the um, the ability where she can give buffs to other people. And so she would just give her um, all her plus damage buffs to that particular unit and then just AoE and blow up everything in one shot. Um, but that could be kind of hard to actually make work. Um, I think really the issue right now is I don't have a lot of means to stack uh, damage buffs right now and it also kind of revolves around what sort of gear you're using which give that can potentially give you know passive uh, plus damage buffs and stuff which i don't use a lot of unfortunately but uh yeah uh, i may tweak the box um there the upcoming character that's coming out soon is there's an uh a, an assassin character that doesn't really see much use in pvp or at least i haven't seen her used that much um, and then the other one is a mermaid uh, support character that, can act that actually has a very interesting song um, ability that can essentially passively stun characters, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of issues with some of these mechanics is Rose and Seal will shut them down. Um, so if you let my if you let your opponent have Rose and Seal, you're kind of just screwed in a lot of ways. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for this season. So um, I will. See you guys at the next summon video, I suppose. Uh, I'm Deed Press Dior. This was Languisher Mobile Apex Season 14. I'll see you guys later.